Good morning. My name is Barb Malera. I'm a member of the team at Harvesting History Heirlooms. We are an heirloom horticultural company that specializes in heirloom seeds, in heirloom flower bulbs, in heirloom roots and sets, and vintage garden tools. We have a website that is www.harvesting-history.com where you can come and if you're interested in heirlooms, it is everything heirloom. Plus there's a tremendous amount of history associated with each product that we offer on our website. So I do encourage you to go to our website and take a look at the products that we offer. Today we're going to be talking about elephant ears, what they are, how to plant them, and a couple of great varieties that you may not have seen before. So, what is an elephant ear? Well, first of all, I have to tell you from the gardener's perspective, it, elephant ears are less like plants and more like pets. You can have them for decades. They last a long time, especially in non-tropical zones, if you bring them into the house. They're very easy to overwinter. So if you can't have a dog or you can't have a cat where you live, have an elephant ear. They make great pets. Now, the most important thing, other than the fact that they're good pets, is that elephant ears are not bulbs. They are tuberous roots. So you see this mother of an elephant ear? This is not a bulb. This is a tuberous root. This is another variety of elephant ear, and from this you can get a better impression that, ah, oh yeah, that I could see where that's a, that's a tuberous root. But all elephant ears are tuberous roots. They are native to parts of tropical Asia. So from China to Vietnam to Thailand um, to Malaysia, these plants originated and are native to that area. Many of the elephant ears that we see today are um, cultivars that have been developed through traditional breeding habits and they have some absolutely exquisite coloration and some ax absolutely exquisite habits. So the way their leaves are shaped, the way the, how big the plant is. The thing about an elephant ear is that it, for the most part, grows by what we call budding. And I'm going to show you, you can see that this is a beautiful, healthy plant. And I'm going to show you what I mean by budding. This elephant ear was originally one bulb that looked very much like this. Then, and this plant, I have had this plant now for about four years. What I want you to see is how these bulbs how this one bulb has now created five healthy babies. Now, okay, this is the bottom of the original bulb. It's now at least five times the size it was when I first planted it. And then each one of these is a bud that has matured into its own plant. If I wanted to, or you wanted to with your own plant, you could just break off each one of these bulbets, bulblets, and plant them and they would form a beautiful plant just like the original plant. Now, to give you an idea of where these bulblets come from, let me show you this. 
and let me get up close. These little circles are where these bulbets, bulbets grow from. So that little tiny thing there will cre create this beautiful plant that you see right there. Now, there is an up and a downside. And oh, by the way, for those of you who are weeping now because I've killed this little plant, I have not killed this little plant. This one volunteered to be the movie star for the day. So for volunteering, it's going to get some fresh, rich container soil when I put it back in its place in my home. So what I want you to remember about this is how, how these tuberous roots will grow. I also want you to know that in particular, this variety of elephant ear is considered a very important food source. It is where you get the pasty starch um, food known as poi. So, elephant ears are indigenous to tropical Asia. They are tuberous roots. They do have an upside and a downside. Let's go back and let me show you the upside and the downside, okay? The upside always has a bullseye or something that looks similar to a bullseye. It's where the main stem grew the year before. So it's easy to see that this is the bullseye on this particular tuberous root. These things are cut off roots that were cut off when they removed this tuberous root from the soil to pack it and sell it. So this is the top and this is the bottom. Now, it's a little bit easier to tell on some of the smaller variety elephant ears because as you can see, that's very obviously the top of this elephant ear. Even if it weren't beginning to sprout, you could easily tell that that's the top. Look, and here, look at this. <laughs> look at that bulbet. It's already beginning to sprout. This mommy is already having a baby. So this would be up for this particular variety of elephant ear. If you don't remember anything about our series on elephant ears, I would like you to remember this extraordinarily important and unique fact. Elephant ears are very, very, very deer resistant. And not only are they deer resistant, but I suspect they give off some kind of a fragrance that you and I don't, aren't aware of but that the deer hate because I've had many customers tell me that when they plant elephant ears in an area, especially an area frequented by deer, the deer don't go near that area anymore. So remember one incredible thing about elephant ears, and that is that they are deer resistant and deer repellent. What a great gift. For our gardens. I hope you've enjoyed our series on elephant ears. I also hope that you get one of these pets for your very own or two or three. I don't want to tell you how many I have because I always plant the ones we have left over at the end of the year and uh, they're just they're just such really nice plants especially when you have something that's living like this that you greet every day for year after year after year. Good luck with your elephant ears. I encourage you to get one. Please come to our website and look at our collection, which is www.harvesting-history.com.